This series of videos is to help you learn how to program in Python. Python is a really easy to learn language uh, and hopefully after uh, watching the series of videos you'll be able to implement some projects and do some things on your own um, with some good understanding of the basics of computer programming and Python in particular. And uh, we're going to begin with the notion of uh, variable. Variable is something that you're all familiar with. It's a, um, a reference to a value, right, that can be changed. And so uh, in Python that is a very um, simple thing to use, simple thing to set up. And uh, I'm just going to talk about this screen that you see right here. What you see right here is what is called the Python shell. And we are in a program called IDLE, which is um, an integrated development environment for Python. Uh, Python is free online. You can just Google it and download it for Mac or PC, and then you'll have this available to you. Um, again, this is called IDLE, I-D-L-E. And uh, this is what pops up, and this is the shell. And the shell is an interactive window that allows you to um, work with Python line by line interactively so that every time you type a line it executes immediately and you see what happens in the result of that that command. So like I said we're going to begin with variables and arithmetic operators because um, that's a familiar starting point and a good place to to begin. So let's say we have a variable x and we want it to equal 5. Well we simply type x equals 5. If we hit enter we see this uh, triple greater than sign, that's called a prompt. Uh, and so um, this is the interactive window prompting us for the next command. Now it looks like nothing happened here. I typed x equals 5 and there's just this prompt sitting there. Um, but in reality what we've done is we've assigned the value 5 to x. And we can see that by typing x. So if we type x now it will evaluate x and tell us that the answer is 5. Right? If I tried to evaluate a variable that I didn't assign anything to, like y, we'll get an error. You can see that um, there's some information here that might look a little bit confusing, but the crux of it is that um, we have a name error and that the name Y has not been defined. And so when we tried to reference Y, there was no value there. And so that's, that's the result of that um, attempt to be reference Y. And so you can see when we type X, we get 5 uh, because of this assignment that we made. And so uh, we can see that that equals sign is what we call an assignment operator. It's not saying um, that x is 5, it's, it's making x 5. And the way that we can read that is um, let x be 5, or x gets 5 is a, is a way that we often say that in programming vernacular. Um, but we can make x get the result of any kind of arithmetic expression as well. So for instance, uh, um, you know, x can be 5 times. Now times in computer programming is usually the asterisk, shift 8. Um, 5 times 6 divided by 2, right? You can kind of do that in your head. 30 divided by 2 is 15. We, again, we don't see anything here, but if we type x, we see 15. Now notice, um, it's not just 15, it's 15.0, uh, as opposed to the 5 here, which was just a regular 5, and we might start to wonder why that is. And uh, that gets us into a discussion of what are called types. So uh, in Python and in any computer programming languages, variables have both values, right, like 5, and the type of value, um, like an integer in the case of five, or you know, a decimal, a real value in the case of 15.0. We call 15.0 a floating point value. Uh, the floating point refers to the decimal point in that it can um, move its place throughout the number based on different arithmetic operations. Uh, so, so yeah, you can see we can assign x integers or floats. Um, call those floats, so like x could be 2.717, right? That's a float. Or x can be, again, 5, and it's an integer, right? Um, another arithmetic operator to be aware of is the exponentiation, the power, right? So if I want to do 7 squared, typically we think that we use the caret, but in Python that's not correct. We use a double asterisk. So if you want to use an exponent, you use double asterisk, 7 squared, x is 49. Okay, so just uh, something to be careful about there. Let's look at some other operators that we can use with variables. Uh, I'm going to define three variables, a, b, and c. So let's let a get 4, um, b gets 10. I'm putting spaces here, but you can um, you don't have to put spaces. c gets 12. That's just for readability. Uh, so now I've defined these three variables, a, b, and c, and they all have values, 4, 10, and 12, respectively. Um, 
Let's say I wanted to add one to C. Well, I could say C gets itself plus one. Now that might look a little bit strange if you're thinking algebraically. No number equals itself plus one, but again, that's not what this is saying. This equal sign means make the left become the right. And it's always left gets right. Um, left becomes right, not the other way around. So we couldn't say C plus one equals C. Uh, it has to be the single variable on the left gets the value on the right. Okay, uh, And so if we type C now, we can check the value C. It should be 13. And it is. Okay? There's a shortcut way of doing that. It's called the increment operator um, plus equals. So if I say C plus equals 1, that means the same thing as C gets C plus 1. And so if I type C again, 14. There are uh, other operators that work with the equals in the same way. I could say C minus equals 1, and that would mean C equals C minus 1, and I can see that result. I can also say c times equals. Now, I wouldn't want to say c times equals 1 because that's just c equals itself, but I could say c times equals a, and that would mean c is c times a. So c gets 13 times 4, and 13 times 4 is 52. We can do other things, too. Uh, in, in math, we're used to variables being single letters or being named single letters like x and y, a, b, c, etc., but in programming, typically we want to name variables in meaningful ways so that the code is easy to read and understand. So let's say I wanted to find the average of A, B, and C. I can create a new variable called average and set that equal to the mean of A, B, and C. A plus B plus C divided by 3. And if I type average now, it's a variable just like A, B, C, or X was. And so I can see that that's 22.0. Uh, the reason this becomes a 22.0 as opposed to just a 22 is that this division sign is what's called a floating point division. And so it means that the result of that division could be a decimal, right? In this case, it wasn't, but it could have been, right? If we had made, um, let's say we add 1 to a, a plus equals 1, and we repeat that average command. So I can um, move up through my shell and hit enter, and it'll bring me to the line that I typed. So average equals a plus b plus c over, uh, a plus b plus c over three again. If I type average to see what that value became, 22.333332, and there's some round off error at the end, okay, because the computer can't represent that number perfectly. Um, but the point is, this division could produce a decimal and so that's why we get the 22.0. There's another kind of division um, called integer division uh, that's a double slash. So uh, let's say I did like six. So if I say six divided by two, that gives me 3.0. But if I say six double divide two, that means integer division, and that's just three. The result is always an integer. Uh, so what if I tried to do integer division of seven divided by two? Well, seven divided by two is three and a half. That's not an integer. But what this does is it gives the largest integer, the largest uh, number of times that the second value can go into the first evenly and then truncates the rest. So it leaves off the remainder. So 7 double divide 2, um, that just means how many times does 2 go into 7 evenly? There's a partner operand, operator to that called the modulus operator, um, and that gives you the remainder. So 7 mod 2 says... What's left over when you divide 7 by 2? Well, 2 goes into 7 three times, which is 6, with 1 left over. So 7 mod 2 is 1. And so we've talked about modular arithmetic. You may have heard about that in the past. That's how we do that in, in Python. Um, 12, excuse me, 12 mod 10 would be 2 because it leaves 2 left over, right? That pretty much does it for the arithmetic operators. Uh, let's look at some other things. Um, because I had talked earlier about types. Uh, we're used to variables in math having values that are numerical, but in computer programming, those values for variables can be all different kinds of types, not just numerical. So for instance, I could have a variable called subject, and it equals the word math. Now notice, um, this is called a string, and um, when I have a string, I have to put that in quotes. Uh, and so... I can see now that my subject is the word math, and that's a fine value for this variable. Now, I might not be able to do math on that because it's a word, 
but it's still a, a variable value for this subject. And this subject variable now holds what we call a string value, right? You can see I put double quotes here, um, but Python spit back single quotes. In Python, double quotes and single quotes are, are interchangeable as long as you match them up the same. So my subject is math. My predicate, making up variable names here, is rocks. And I'm going to use single quotes. I can do all kinds of stuff. Like I could make a sentence out of that. Sentence equals subject plus, um, I want a space between those, so I'm going to put a space and a predicate. Now what does this mean? Well, this means the, the variable sentence gets my subject value, which is math, plus, what does plus mean? Well, you know, plus in math means add the two numbers. But um, when we're dealing with a different type like strings, it means something else. It means what we call concatenation, uh, which just means putting together, right? So math plus a space means math space, plus predicate means math plus space plus rocks is math space rocks. And so if I type sentence now to see what that value is, math rocks. Just an example of how operators, like the plus sign, have different meanings depending on what the operands type are. Okay, uh, so there we go. There are other kind of operators too, such as comparison operators. These are operators that you're familiar with, but we want to talk about how they work in Python as well. Um, when I talk about comparison operators, I mean like greater than or less than or equal to. So for instance, uh, is three greater than four? Well, no. So what does this mean? This is an untrue statement. And so Python in comparison operators evaluates those as true or false values. And so since 3 is not greater than 4, the result of this is false. And I could actually set that to a variable if I wanted to. Variables can hold true and false values. Uh, we call those variables Boolean variables um, after George Boole who studied logic. So I could say something like, um, you know, uh, statement equals 3 greater than 4. What is that statement? It's false. Okay. Uh, conversely, if I said three is less than four, well, that's a true statement. So this returns a true value. What about, um, I want to know if two things are equal, right? Is six equal to two times three? Yes, it is, but this isn't going to work. Why? Well, it says can't assign to literal. Remember, the equal sign means make these two things equal, not, it doesn't answer the question, are these two things equal? So um, for that, we need a different operator. I can't make 6 equal 2 times 3. It happens to equal 2 times 3, but I can't make it that. 6 is just 6. I can ask the question, is 6 equal to 2 times 3? And to do that, we use the double equals operator. And so 6 equals equals 2 times 3. Yes, that's true, and so this will return true. 6 equals equals 5? No, that's false. This will return false. But I can't say 6 equals 5, because that's just not possible. It's not true or false. It's not possible. This says make 6, 5, and that can't be done. One last uh, comparison operator is the greater than or equal to and less than or equal to operators. So, you know, let's say I have uh, x equals 8, right? I can ask the question, is x less than or equal to 10? And that's how we would do that. We would say less than and then the equal sign. So is x less than or equal to 10? Yes, it is. So this is a true statement, right? Is 13 greater than or equal to x? Yes, it is. So this, again, is a true statement. Um, it's 13 greater than or equal to 13. Yes, it is, so that's true. There you go. So now you have a good understanding of variables, types, and um, operators in Python. In the next video, we'll look at some more advanced types like lists and dictionaries.